boy, Ancient Albatross here again with the Cypher Unlimited crew. We have our usual suspects of AD or Alpha Dean. We have Spigs18 or Anthony. And just a quick reminder, if you haven't yet, be sure to follow and subscribe on YouTube and Twitch. It'll really help our channel out. And Dean, what are we doing here today? Well, you know, guys, we're getting ready to have a conversation with none other than Charles M. Ryan. Um, this man has been around for ever in the gaming industry. Um, he's contributed titles nearly every class of tabletop game, from board games, card games, trading card games, miniature games, role-playing games. And this is over 25 years worth of experience in the industry. He also just happens to be the COO of Monty Cook Games. And we're here to talk about today the new Kickstarter and all things Monty Cook, but you know, really about that Kickstarter. Charles, wanna say hello to everybody out there in the interwebs who come to see us? Hello, all you people out there on the interwebs. Thanks for coming to see us. <laughs> uh, uh, just one quick thing. The uh, Kickstarter is called Path of the Plane Breaker. If you, you haven't um, backed it yet, please go and do it. We're going to, hopefully after this interview, you're going to be convinced to want to go back it. So, um, yeah, I just want to throw the name out there. So, Charles, welcome back to the CU. This is Thank awesome. I'm happy to have you. Thanks for having me. Having you know, bef before we get to what I know our audience is actually excited to hear about, you know, Plane Breaker, <laughs> your guys just recently came back from Game Hold Con. You know, yeah. how was the, you know, how has the convention scene been this year for MCG? And, you know, do you guys have any plans, you know, to change the way you do cons, like in the future, like with Gen Con and stuff like that? Well, uh, so we did Game Hole Con just this past weekend. Literally got back on Monday evening. And um, uh, Gen Con was only like, I don't know, five weeks before that, something like that. Um, so those are the first two cons we've been in more, to, in more than two years, like since Gen Con of 2019, I guess. So it's all, you know, it's all coming back to me now. This is how we do things, right? <laughs> but it was, um, uh, yeah, so Game Hole Con was like, that's the first time we've ever gone to that show. It's a mid-sized regional show. It's in Wisconsin at about, I don't know, three or 4,000 people. Um, and it was a really fun show because it was very, very laid back. We actually sponsor this lounge. It's like upstairs. It's like on the sky bridge over the concourse, the main concourse, the exhibit hall. And then like there's a bar in that area. And at the bottom of the stairs, there's an ice cream vendor and a coffee vendor. And we had our games running up there and everything. And it was just, um, it was just really, really laid back and a lot of fun. Um, so we'll do that show again for sure. I think that that was a really cool show, and I would encourage anybody who's you know within a reasonable travel distance, or or, or even not. There were some members of the Cyber System community um, that were there from like as far away as Florida, maybe further as far as far as I know. So it was it was cool to see people there. It's it's a it, it's a good show. I would totally recommend people go to that one. Um, then we ran a bunch of games. We ran um, uh, uh, Death Thy Name Is Gravitas. Uh, which is for, from Claim the Skies, um, and that's so that's a superhero cam, uh, superhero adventure. And I actually ran that a couple times myself, in addition to the other, you know, the gems that were there with us. Um, and it was, oh man, it was so much fun. Um, I superheroes is not like my first and foremost genre, but superheroes and cipher is just, it is just so much fun. It is so fast paced, and you know, people are bringing out these really great ideas, and and you know, you can make just such make big things happen in cipher so easily. So it was a awful lot of fun running those adventures we ran Paulus, we ran um um a numenera as well and uh yeah so that was that was a lot of fun and just on the heels of gen con just a few weeks before that which was um quite a bit more modest than gen cons of recent years i'd say probably like half the people that were there um compared to usual and that's still enough to fill that you know that that facility with you know tens of thousands of people and we ran about half the games that we would normally run um, which was good because we had the same space, but Gen Con was doing everything with twice as much space between tables for COVID reasons. So that worked out really well. Um, yeah, so we're actually looking forward to next year being, you know, a little bit more normal. Um, as a matter of fact, we've even, I, I, normally we don't start thinking about our adventures or GMs and things like that until December, January. We've already put out the call for GMs. So if there's people out there in the CU community or the general MCG community that are keen on running games at, uh, at, uh, shows, um, you know, we got this go, go to the MCG website and there's already an article, um, with a, an interest sign up. Let us know that you're, that you're keen to go. Um, we'll, we'll yeah, definitely I, be back at Gen Con next year. 
you know, yeah, I kind of yeah. miss the, I miss, I just miss hanging out with all you guys and like the CU community and the Monty Cook Games fan community is like the best in the world, in my opinion. So Thanks, nice yeah, I, 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 I could not agree more. It's a great, great community of, of, of gamers and GMs. And it was really cool seeing people in person uh, for the first time in a, in a long time. And also like, so Bruce was at Gen Con. Um, Sean was at Game Hole Con. That's the first, like these guys are friends of mine, not just from Monaco Games, but going back much further, hadn't seen them in, in you know, two and a half years. So like, yeah, getting together with people face to face is really a, a really nice change of pace after the past couple of years. <laughs> well, and, and to be super clear, like Gen Con, both those shows were uh, masks on 100% of the time and Game Hole Con actually required vaccination proof to attend the show. So they both seem to be handled in a reasonably safe manner. You know, was, uh, well, we wouldn't... Yeah. Um, we wouldn't encourage our, our community to get involved in what we thought was an unsafe safe situation. And we certainly wouldn't ask our team, our, our employees, our people to, you know, to travel and do stuff that wasn't safe if, if we didn't feel like, if, if all of us didn't feel like that was the case. Well, I think we all appreciate that. I think we all, I was just saying, I think we all appreciate that. And I'll be honest with you, I was a chicken. I, I'm just basically playing it like extra safe. Um, and I, I refuse <laughs> to do any conventions or anything this year. I mean, I only went to one movie as much as right. I love the movies, I've been to one movie in the last two years. So, right. you know, um, but I'm raring to go. Like I said, my wife and I and my son already bought, uh, got our hotel room for Gen Con. You know, we'll be right downtown this year, you know, in 2022. And uh, just can't wait to see what we can, you know, what kind of magic we can make. Yeah. yeah. Um, Latia and Sean would awesome this year at game on con they gave me updates on twitter of all the cool <laughs> yeah. that you got. Yeah. so I, I was it sort of felt a little bit like i was there but i was <laughs> jealous as all hell that i wasn't gaming with you guys but you know thank god for latia and sean they will always get posted updates yeah and i i would have been in there too but um um our uh our hot spot had to stay back at the at the warehouse and so i was all the all of our register was running off of our phone. My phone, see, it disappears there. But yeah, there it is. I like how I can see. <laughs> was oh, working. No. We were actually, uh, I, and I tell you, I was, I was jealous of that, uh, that, that, that suite you guys, the Monty Cook suite. I would have, I would have probably hung out there the whole time. <laughs> it was, it was pretty cool. I, I was sold when it was like we have a bar right here. I, like, I know, right? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was. Yeah, say but you know, so the bar show. bar opens as one would expect at about you know I don't know mid mid afternoon or so every day. Um, but like I said, if if you know we had ice cream and coffee right at the bottom of our staircase as well. It was it was like living the best con life possible. <laughs> That's that, awesome. That definitely does sound amazing for a, a con lounge. And uh, before I go on to the next question, I will say, um, I'm just going back a little bit about the uh, call for GMs for at conventions and stuff. If you guys like running games, definitely take take part of this because it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. You get a nice little swag bag depending on how much you participate. And there's some mm -hmm. nice stuff in there. Dice, little freebies. It's it's, it's awesome. The, the Montego Games definitely hooks you up for helping them out. It's it's really nice. And um, yeah, we do a uh, die hard GM, you get a free badge as well. Yep. So, you yep, know, free, it's, it's well worth it. Free badge. Right. And, and uh, we usually do for Gen Con, we usually do a book that's an, a print book that's an exclusive that you can't get anywhere else. And it's like a, a legit soft cover book. Um, oh, but yeah. that said, I think the best part of it is just the, like being there. Because, uh, like, as you guys have said, we have this fantastic community. Some of the just really fantastic GMs and people hang out in the game room. And they, you know, they chat, they meet up. Oh, and, and um, this year for Gen Con on Wednesday night, we're going to actually do a, instead of just having a meeting at the beginning where we give people their swag and make sure they have the adventures and all that sort of stuff, um, we're actually going to have a game night and and game with the staff and stuff like that. So oh, awesome. uh, I, I, as, as cool as all the stuff we do is, I think that um, that just, you know, being there with the MCG crew and with the community is, is what really makes it awesome. So I'm buying my plane ticket now. I know I will definitely be here. Well, we already got the rooms for Wednesday night anyway, but I'll probably be there at two, like one o'clock, you know, in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it definitely sounds awesome. And definitely I do miss it. And I look forward to the future to attending yeah. again. Uh, but yeah, let's talk, let's talk more about this Kickstarter. So Path of the Plane Breaker is your latest Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. It's been creating a huge buzz on our server. Can you tell us a little bit more about the setting and what is the difference between the plane breaker and the path that has been described somewhat in the information section of the Kickstarter? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So um, uh, I know that you guys have had some of the, or are looking forward to having some of the design team on and, can, and Bruce in particular, who's the lead on this project could probably go into much greater detail uh, than I can. I, I have played a game set on, you know, getting onto the, on the path and the plane breaker. And um, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff, but I have like, you know, I'm not a designer, I'm not, a, not on the design team, but I will say this, like the, the fundamental like part of it is that this plane breaker is this object. It's like a, um, not like the size of our moon, but it's a moon like object. It's, a, it's like a gigantic asteroid like thing, except that instead of traveling through space, it just crashes through different planes, one after the other, um, almost just like continuously. Like it doesn't spend a long period of time in, one, in any one given place, a few days, right, before it crashes out into the next one. Um, and on this thing, uh, there's, there's people and creatures that live. Mostly that they are they are people, creatures, and other debris that have been picked up from these other planes along the way. They kind of get stuck onto it, debris almost. But some of them are, you know, travelers and merchants. Um, but many, uh, you know, refugees, people trying to find a place to hide out, like within the overall multiverse, right? Like you know, just all, all sorts. Um, and they and there are people that sort of make a living, if you will, by kind of. Um, uh, salvaging or, or mining is not quite the right word, but like salvaging up the debris that the plane breaker has just picked up from all these different planes that wash up on the shores of uh, the sea of uncertainty. Um, so like if you look at the shape, the picture there behind Alpha Dean, um, and you can see the, the, the radiating blue lines and stuff like that, those are like, like, like uh, uh, levees or, or, or roadways on the sea of uncertainty. So it's more than just fracture lines. It's like there's objects there. Um, and then you've got the city of Timeborn on there, which is sort of like the city that the, pe the people on on the Plane Breaker live on. And then, you know, in that image, you kind of see how it's, it's sort of busted through reality and created this trail of ether or what have you as, it, as it's where it's broken through. Um, it, its path of destruction, destruction is not the right word, the path that it has blown as it's as it's gone through all these different planes hundreds or millions of different planes um that's called the path there's actually like a like a trail that if you can get on it you can just sort of follow it and go from plane to plane to plane um and um often case often in my experience playing the game and i i can't speak that this is like the way it always is but the the path is kind of like is through the skies above the world that it's visiting so it's sort of like you can step off on it and hope you have a good way to survive the fall a feather fall your way down or what have you fly down um but but uh yeah so that you know maybe it, you might not be able to get on the path from the plane but you can get off the, the path onto the plane oh, that's awesome. that sounds so cool and it's got its own like um i don't know ecosystem is too strong a word right but there are creatures that like that go back and forth, right? They don't really interact with any given play. They, they venture forth from theirs to other places to, to loot or bring back prisoners or to trade or do whatever it is that they do along that. So when you're on the path itself, you might meet other other beings that are traveling back and forth. That is the image like that. behind Dean, is that the cover art for the main book? It is, yep. Who, who's the artist on that? Because that is fantastic, Charles. That is Federico Musetti, I believe, is the oh artist who did that God, piece. That thing is awesome. I wish yeah, I had a link Federico. to share because, yeah, that is stellar. <laughs> that's Federico. I was looking at it. That's why I picked that picture because it was. I was like, that's just badass. Yeah, and the colors <laughs> pop so vivid. Like, exactly. Every yeah. time I see it, I'm like, oh man, the thing. You is know so what? Cool. I, you know what? I what I dig about it is that if you really look at it, like you did, you said it's vivid. It's that it's visceral mm -hmm. because it's so, but it's actually subdued. That would like look great on a dark wall, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, but, you know, let's keep it moving, you know, get talking about the stuff because we can wax philosophical all day. Um, so there's a minor uproar when this was first announced. I know I had a fit right away, you know, I'm not, I'm <laughs> just, you know, just honest about it, you know, but as the Frank Frame Breaker was originally announced for as a 5e project. Mm -hmm. You guys later announced the Cypher version. Was that always your goal or was it kind of just because the community went kind of crazy? Um, I would say it was a uh, kind of a mix, right? This was conceptualized first and foremost as a D&D &D product because it really is kind of built around the D&D &D paradigm and the D&D &D multiverse, right? Um, but I think it didn't take us very long before we realized there was absolutely no reason there couldn't be a Cypher system version of this. 
you know, uh, and, and that cyber system re, uh, players would find it valuable and interesting. Um, and so certainly then seeing that the community was agreeing with us on that, we were like, okay, you know, let's, let's absolutely do it for, for, um, uh, for both systems. Right. right now, when we set out to, to build the Kickstarter, um, the feeling was that our community would have no problem understanding what this is. If we say 5e, 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 also Cypher system, the D&D community for whom this was originally sort of the most conceptualized for, you know, there's, there's hundreds of thousands of gamers out there that, that play D&D, don't even know that other game systems exist. Like literally do not even know that you can play other role-playing games, uh, let alone, uh, you know, understand all that. So we wanted to make sure that our message for them was, was super, super clear. Um, um, yeah. So I think at, at the beginning, uh, we had some questions about whether like everything would be stuff that the Cypher system gamers would enjoy. But at the end of the end of the day, like, of course, of course they would. So like, yeah, we decided <laughs> we'd make the full slate uh, available for Cypher system. And just the easiest way to do that was to say, just, back it at your level and just, yeah, you know, we'll tell you, do you want it in cyber system and in backer kit? And you'll say yes. And then that's where you'll get it. Gotcha. Uh, uh, I'm not going to lie. I don't know if you saw, uh, we did a prediction video, like a speculation video path of the um, mm -hmm. plane breaker, like three or four weeks ago. I remember. And it was everybody uh, that was prior to the announcement of uh, it coming to cyber system. And that mm -hmm. was the talk. Like, how could it not be cyber system? So right. you know, just for our own sanity, I, we all said in the video that we were 100% positive it was going to be cyber system at one point. Right. But just for our own sanity, I was happy you guys announced it when you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. I mean, not everything we will do will be for, for, well, for cyber system. I mean, certainly when you look at something like uh, you know, stealing stories for the devil, right? Like that's its own thing. And it just, it's designed to be its own thing. It's its own game experience. It's not intended to, to emulate the experience you get out of Cypher system. But uh, 5e is a lot closer in, 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 in the general experience. And like, when we look at this, we're like, yeah, absolutely. This is something that, that Cypher would benefit from. Mm -hmm. Um, the, you know, this latest Kickstarter is, is kind of, I could be mistaken, but it's, to me personally, slightly different from the last few, you know, your guys mm -hmm. that produce our MCG, because you already announced three books, and you have, pardon my French, a shitload of accessories announced already from the beginning, right? Yep. You have the core book, the special edition core book, a player's mm -hmm. guide, a bestiary, two different dice sets. A full set of minis, a GM, a dice tray, GM screen, resource decks. I could just keep on going on and on. It's just to name a few, just coming right out of the gate, right? Yeah. So was this your goal to grab everyone's attention, you know, with this huge haul of material right off the bat? Because I'm gonna tell you right now, it worked on me. <laughs> like, <laughs> so on. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that I think that says I, I think it's a pretty accurate summation. I also think that um you know, we we were an early leader, and I say we really Monty and Shauna initially, right? Early leaders in in RPGs on Kickstarter and and, and doing this sort of big stuff that, that you see more commonly these days. And uh, we always want to try new things, and you know, right, yeah, we, we can always do what we've done before, but like let's try let's try it a different way. And in this case, we decided to put out a really compelling offering from the very beginning. Um, and, and then, and then build out that offering. Right. So like, I think you'll see most of the, at the stretch goals, as you've seen so far, have been about improving and expanding the books. And like, um, as we start out, the, the beast area is probably a soft cover in its, in its initial state, but yeah, you know, we certainly hope to see it build out to a hard cover and a bigger, thicker book. And, uh, the player's guide, I think has room to go toward, a um, uh, almost like, like a character options type of thing. Um, get, you know, getting bigger and thicker as well. Um, uh, so yeah, yeah, just a different approach because we like trying new things and, and what works. I have to speak to that one because I'm glad you made those statements, Charles, because there was a big uproar on the server as well about what the offerings were initially mm -hmm. and, you know, how MCG should do certain this and certain that. And right. I basically said, you know what, I actually think it's a good idea. I love your model for the simple fact there's a lot there, but it's not too much, and it gives us room to right. grow. And it also 
you know, I'll be honest with you, some Kickstarters for me personally are, I won't say necessarily intimidating, but they're overwhelming because right. they have this big thing. So I'm looking at it. So before I even get started, I'm like, man, can my wallet afford this? <laughs> right. Whereas, right. And, you know, in this method that you're doing, it gives me, it gives a slow burn and I, and I can say, okay, all right, I can add a little bit and I can, okay, right. I can, it just makes it easier, at least for me. I don't know right. about the resident, but I'm glad you, you brought it up and did say that these things were on the horizon because these were questions that were, right. you know, being asked about it. So good stuff. Yeah. And I think the clarity of what you're trying to offer people also can, can sometimes be challenging on a big Kickstarter, right? So you want to make sure that what you put in front of people is really easy to understand, particularly if there's a lot of it, yeah. you know? Um, so that's, I think that's uh, another um, really important aspect to it. Um, but all that said, I, want, I don't want to give the impression that like we're nailed down to one specific thing, right? Like, so I was a bit surprised at how many people said, I want both Cypher system and 5e. We didn't really anticipate that. So yesterday, the first day of the, of the campaign, with everything else going on, we built a whole new level and got it out there, right? So that people could get could get I, I was, both the books. I was not surprised at all. I, I think the majority of the tallest backers on our server were backing right. at both levels. You know, like from tallest, just right. from the conversation of me personally, like right by, you can't see with my blue screen, but right behind me, I have both versions of Tolis directly behind me. You know, right. even though I'm a majority Cypher system player, I like, I like having both versions just mm -hmm. to see the design comparison. Like it gives me a better idea when I want to convert something from D20 base games to Cypher, how it's done because you know, right. You I, got I get right to see there. how Sean and Bruce did it. And it gives me like a, a framework to build, you know, work off. Right, right. That makes I mean, sense. And, and, I've, and I've, I've learned that I just should just go ahead and buy, you know, both <laughs> versions. So because, you know, of course, thankfully, you know, I, I just turned around and ordered, a, you know, a D and a D, a 5e version. But mm -hmm. I should just order from the beginning because I'm going to end up doing the same thing just for that reason. <laughs> You know. Well, I'll tell you what, then that the new level that we added, the multiverse master level is, um, you know, at a certain point, like when you're in, when you're talking about things that are north of three hundred dollars, I personally get really trepidation. It's, and it's really, really hard for me to commit that kind of money to something personally. So I feel really nervous about going too much higher. So that that level basically is the cost of the hardcover books and, the you know, the deck, the resource deck, like all of them in. PDF, or excuse me, all of them for 5e and all of them for Cypher. And then everything else, all the PDFs, all of the items, the, the, these premium dice and things like that are basically free at that Beautiful. level. And I love it. And I'm, you know, I'm right. I'm already pledged. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say yeah. that um, it, it must be working, right? So I, I obviously pulled up the Kickstarter page before we started, right? And I pulled it up again just now just to see what, what it was at. It had already gone up 2K in that short time. So, yeah, people are definitely excited for this. Um, and yeah, it's definitely awesome that you had uh, the tier for both. Because now, in retrospect, I am wanting the 5 e Tolis, even though I didn't <laughs> order it initially. But I feel myself wanting it now. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. Definitely awesome to have the level that has both of them included. <laughs> and I should be yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah, I I indulging as well. <laughs> Uh, but nice. yeah. I wish I wish I brought them over. I got the um, you know, we were working with vendors on like the dice and the other sort of like the premium level things. And I got to tell you, the, the dice are just they're spectacular. It's um, uh, Metallic Dice Games is the company that makes them. The, I'm talking about the premium dice here, and they're just they're unbelievable. I don't have ones that have the markings that we're going to have on ours, but I have them that have the the materials, um, yeah. and they're 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 really really cool. Well, um, you already know no. I'm a dice goblin anyway, Charles. So you you already know this is like right up my alley. I might have to buy an extra set that I never opened. Yes. <laughs> I definitely am looking forward to dice too, especially now I'm saying it like like especially nice. To, oh, all right, awesome. But either way, let's let's move on a little bit here. Uh, so the uh, the book uh, Path of the Plane Breaker itself will include dozens of new worlds for us to explore, uh, plus the in neck in neck in neck in. Uh, Enigmat enigmatic? I'm um, uh, oh, whatever. <laughs> Plane Breaker itself, but it will also include so much more original content. Can you tell us a little bit more about what else is included in this tome for both the 5e and the cipher versions? Mm -hmm. Yep. So um 
uh, will get created. So as you mentioned, dozens of actual planes. Um, so I'll, I'll start off by saying that there's a preview uh, that you can download from the Kickstarter. It's also on drive through It's free, and it gives you a look at one plane and one subclass for, so it's basically one thing for a GM, one thing for a player. So um, it'll have uh, subclasses on the 5e side, subclasses, feats, other mechanical things, character options uh, on the 5e side. We'll have similar equivalent character option type things over on the, the Cypher system version. So you'd expect to see, you know, descriptors and foci and things like that. Um, uh, it's got, you know, items, magic items and debris and on, you know, exotic things you find from the planes that have ended up on the plane breaker, um, creatures. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and then the book of the, the bulk of the book will be dozens. And I, I don't know, I can't put an exact number on that, but I think that the design team is talking about like several dozens, you know, five or six dozen um, of these different planes uh, presented in, in some substantial amount of detail in each case. And some might be given uh, more detail and some might be given less. Like when you think about um, World's Numberless and Strange for uh, for the Strange, right? You know, you had some that were covered in, you know, just a page or, or even less and some that were much more detailed. I think I think I would expect something like that as well. That, that's, you know, next to Stay Alive, that's my second favorite MCG book of all time. I was just telling Claire for Infinite Construct that yesterday, that that's probably, and that's immediately when I thought, you know, when I saw dozens of alternate worlds, I, mm -hmm. my mind immediately went to Worlds Numberless, and Bruce wrote Worlds Numberless, so, mm -hmm. and he's writing this, so, I, you know, I'm 100% confident that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be awesome. Yeah, and, yeah, for sure. And I'll just uh, say this before I ask the next question. Um, again, from the community, somebody just made a statement that, you know, it would be nice if, you know, or that would be an interesting stretch goal to just make a, uh, you know, a planar handbook like that. So just throwing it out there. I don't know if it's in the in the lexicon, it's in the thought process, but the community wants it, would love to see that as well. So, um, so on to that question and it just makes perfect sense you know you guys got legendary i mean legends in the industry working at monty cook games this team consists of bruce cordell sean k reynolds monty cook i mean that's you know that's like the holy trinity of gaming if you ask me you know that's really like off awesome so that's a super team can you tell mm -hmm. us you know uh who's working on what at the moment uh, do you mean specifically related to Plane Breaker or just generally? Yeah, like Plane Breaker. Or, or if yeah. you want to tell us about other projects, that's even better. We, we'll take that uh, too. Yeah, might as well hit them both to the, to the extent that I can. Um, so yeah, Bruce is, is sort of the lead on Plane Breaker, uh, but Monty and, and uh, Sean are both con uh, contributing, to, contributing to it as well. Um, and then, of course, the Player's Guide and the, the Bestiary will all be sort of you know, wrapped up as sort of the same main project. Uh, what are the others working on right now? So uh, Monty is working on stealing story stuff. Uh, is that true? Maybe that's not true. <laughs> um, he may have turned, he may be done with stealing stories now. I know he had also done some work on um, who are you and, and what are you, um, or who the devil are you, which is one of the other games that came along mm -hmm. with uh with the stealing stories kickstarter i know that shauna is working on uh um, Dan devil's dandy dogs uh i'm not 100 percent sure i know which project <laughs> Give me a second here i can look this up i always <laughs> picture monty just he has like eight arms and he's just writing <laughs> <laughs> different projects at the same time i think i think monty kind of wishes that was the case yeah um <laughs> Uh, so uh, Bruce is actually on Plane Breaker right now, right? So that's that's what Bruce is doing. Sean is, um, oh, he's doing uh, Bane Warren's work, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know, yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, all these projects on the design team move around because we have a designer who does the work on it, and then somebody else on the design team will work as the developer on it to kind of, you know, do review. Then the whole design team meets on, on these things on a regular basis. And then, of course, Monty does anything that he wasn't directly hands on the, the, you know, the main writer or the developer on will also look at uh, as from the creative director uh, standpoint. So all of these things have, uh, there's nothing that isn't touched by pretty much everybody on the design team to a certain extent. Is Bruce also the lead on the beast theory? Uh, I don't know that off the top of my head. Don't know, I, as far as I know, I, uh, those are kind of gonna be part and parcel, but uh, don't hold me to that. Yeah. 
either way, I'm pretty excited for whoever's the lead. It doesn't matter. Yeah, all three of them yeah for sure. In my eyes. That, um, uh, super creative team. Like, like you say, uh, you, you couldn't ask to work with a, a more creative and, and talented and dedicated group of, of game designers. Could, you, could we talk a little bit, and uh, maybe you could explain to us about the options um, someone has when backing this project? You know, you mentioned earlier that you recently added a whole new tier to back both the Cypher and 5e versions. Right. You, you, you also, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not, but um, you, you give two free mini files for any backer level. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. We did a set of 12 STLs uh, or 12 miniatures that we've had um, sculpted. And when I say sculpted, this is being done, you know, digitally, 3D design. Um, uh, and then they they will also be available then to be manufactured into physical miniatures. Um, uh, and so two of them, so there's two sets of five that you can get as add-ons or come to some of the backer levels. Um, and then two of them, their STL files or 3D printing files are, are just included in every single level. We just, we took two of them aside and said, everybody gets these two. Um, and they're, they're STL files. So like if you have a 3D printer, you can print them. Um, I have a 3D printer. It's not really good enough to make great miniatures but uh but uh, I, I might give it a, sp uh, a shot but if um you know if you have like a, a really a, a nice resin printer or something like that they probably produce really beautiful miniatures um so those are those are available there's like you said there's two free of them free in every backer level so even if you back for just the pdf of plane breaker and nothing else you get the two free stls and then the other uh other 10 files are in some of the backer levels um, and then uh, as an add-on or at the higher end the physical miniatures are also included. Yeah. Which look awesome, by the way. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They they really do. And I think don't think we've even shown off all of the art. I mean, I think we've shown the, the renderings of the models, but there's also art that goes along with, with some of them. You can look down and you can see the um the uh um the observer demon. I can't remember what it was called. What is it called? Uh the Avernus Observer. Um and you can oh. see the art in the background of some of the imagery on the Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, but we have art for some of the other pieces too that we have, I don't think we've shown yet. That's the really art is, good is phenomenal, and it's really cool that you guys are offering the uh, the two free files with every level. Um, and again, even if you don't have your own three D printer, there's you know services where you can send these right. things out, get them printed. Absolutely, yeah, it's it's really awesome. Um, yeah, speaking real quick, I don't know if, and that was just something that's just hit me when you were talking about this. You were talking about like the STL files and all this. Are you guys planning on putting out these uh, tokens as well? You know, these digital tokens? Because I know some people were asking about it, and that would probably be a really nice uh, stretch goal, too, if that's, you know, possible. But the so, tokens where you're showing, like, the subclasses and spells and playable species, you know, people were asking. Right. About so you're talking about tokens it might use on a, on a VTT, like Roll20 or yes. something like that. Yeah. Yes. So we are actually looking to move um, to where we sort of do that with all of our products that if you're getting that, that, that there would be availability of of um vtt support with all of with all of our products um so i don't know that we're going to do that as a stretch goal it may be just something that happens with this one um, the one that we made a big commitment to um obviously is uh, when we did when we kickstarted heroes of the cypher system about this time last year we started going to do that for all the adventures for this for that book um and we will probably ultimately it's a, it's a lot of work but we will ultimately look at, at, at trying to do that for like you know in the long run for our entire back catalog. That'll be awesome. Oh that would be God. it will be, but I don't want to make I don't want anybody to get too excited about the timing because it is it's an awful <laughs> lot of work and it'll take us a long yeah. time to get through the entire process. I'm excited right. already though. Thank you. Hey, Charles. I, I don't think Doris box has been open. I don't think I don't think people understand the power of patience because I'm just I, I literally just sit back and it's like, you know, I, I look at MCG as the gift that just keeps on giving. You know, just when I think there's nothing else, you know, I go to the door and I got a new book. It's like, <laughs> I got a new package. Al, before we move on to the next question, I think it's important to just state. Even if you don't back at the higher levels and you see something you like on the Kickstarter, you could always just purchase it individually in the backer kick, correct? Right. So, you know, if you know you don't have all the money to get, you know, all the miniatures, you could go back and just back it at the kick or the the 
the dice the scale files or whatever. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. right. you know the the dice tray looks awesome. The collector's edition core book looks phenomenal. If you own any of the MCG collector's edition books, you know that they're well worth it. You know that Numenera original one is like you know that's a conversation starter in my house. You know that's such a beautiful nice. book. So even if you don't have the money to back it originally, you could always get it in the backer kit. But some items are only available in <laughs> at the He was good as all circuit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so, and, and, you know, while we're on the topic really quickly, talk about, like, you mentioned the really beautiful um, uh, deluxe book and, and the miniatures and everything else. Like, I would just like to make a big shout out because we've talked a lot about the designers and they do, they're the heart of what we do and they do great work. But I got to give a serious shout out to Bear Whiter, our art director, who worked his butt off to make this this thing look as as beautiful as it did. And he designed that deluxe book. Um, he is the one that wrangled the artists and got these miniatures made and did all the, you know, the process of, you know, getting sketches from the art, artists and, you know, talking with the design team about what's working and what's not. And then just making it just uh, making it all look phenomenal. Um, and, and Bear worked really hard on this Kickstarter and the things in it. And um, I, I can't uh, I can't heap enough praise on on his uh, hard work and talent. Yeah. Well, Bear, so if you well. are, let's just put it out there. Bear, come back. We need you back on the show. You only been here once. Come back, talk to us. We'd love to talk to you about this project as well, because you know we love you too, Bear. You know we agree with Charles one thousand percent that Bear is the man because these books, every book I have gotten from MCG is absolutely gorgeous. You know. Yes. And we were lucky to have him. Facts. Well, moving along here, this is something that was actually asked uh, along in the chat, but we do have a question here, main main one for it. It's pretty, um, you know, should be expected question. But, you know, since the Kickstarter has been announced, um, we've already hit two stretch goals and climbing. Three stretch goals. Oh, since now I three. Wrote this. Three <laughs> stretch goals since he wrote this. <laughs> and climbing. Are there any other books in the plans for a future stretch goals, or are there any other stretch goals uh, in the future that you could possibly share with us here? Um, you know, we tend to not talk about the stretch goals uh, uh, too far in advance. Um, you know, we try to tend to uh, uh, like to reserve the ability to be a bit reactive to what's going on and and so on and so forth. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna de- demure on that one. For for the record, we we all know that, but I still try to slip it in there because <laughs> might want to catch you. You know, you, you might have had a couple of genitalics before you hopped on the show. <laughs> want to be a little chatty? We we have to slip it in there. Never know. You <laughs> never know. He's feeling like he's in a giving mood. Right. <laughs> all right so you know let's move on and you know i mean we're gonna have a couple of questions from the uh from the chat and we're gonna get to those but can you tell us how the other mcg kickstarter product projects are doing right now you know you know me you know i'm you know swinging on the chain waiting for heroes of the cypher yeah. or the devil made us do it you know so on and so forth or any future projects you want to talk about as well uh, so, um, well, let's go down. Let's go down the list there. Um, uh, so, here's the cipher system. We're getting claim the sky in. Uh, it's been on press for about three weeks. It's supposed to ship on Friday to our warehouses. Um, we did just get the word because there's supply chain issues and manufacturing issues everywhere. We did get the word that there's going to be a small slip on that from the factory, but I think we're talking less than a week, so it shouldn't impact um, Kickstarter backers all that much. Um, uh, so we should be able to fulfill um, in November as 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 we as our intention. Um, uh, let's see. Well, actually, our intention was was October, but I don't I don't know that we will be able to get the fulfillment out before the end of this week. So it'll probably be the first few days in in November when we do that. Uh, so stealing stories, of course, is a big one. Um, that is where it should be in the process, right? So it's it's um, uh, has been transitioning from uh from design into editing uh, recently it'll be editing for a few weeks or, or whatever it is uh, art is coming in for it i saw some sketches for some cool stuff today um layout will be late this year and and we'll get it to, off to press early next year with the um intention you know we called that one for august but we were 
uh, hedging a little bit with the supply chain and particularly with the freight delays. Uh, now, the freight delays are beginning to ease off. The costs are still high, but the delays are are, are reducing a little bit. Um, huh, well, uh, I'll come back to that. Um, but in any event, um, it's, uh, uh, that's on track for its August delivery. But really, we hope we hope to be early on that one because we kind of hedged a little bit by making it August. We were nice. really hoping it would be a bit earlier, um, and it's on track for that. Uh, but talking about uh, freight delays, I, I said they're getting easier because uh, two months ago it was you couldn't you couldn't book space come hell or high water, right? It was it was a, a, what used to be a five thousand dollar container cost was a $28,000 container cost if you could get the space. Um, uh, then space became available. However, uh, we shipped the tallest uh, GM screen and NPC deck from China um, in August, I think, or whatever. I can't remember exactly when it, when it went. Um, and it sat, you probably heard stories about all the ships outside of Long Beach and, and LAX. Um, uh, it sat on one of those ships for, I don't know, four weeks or something like that before it got ashore. Um, it is ashore now. And so we are waiting. Our, our freight broker sends us updates every day by email and to, with expectations. And I think we are, um, much to my chagrin, probably still two weeks away from having it in the warehouse. But um, at least it is now feet dry on American soil. Um, yep. Yeah, so that's, so that's, there's Tallis. There's uh, Heroes of the Cypher System. The Devil Made Us Do It. Uh, one other thing, one of the things we're still delivering right now. I mean, um, the darkest house is, I think the only thing left in the darkest house is the art book, which is pending. It's, it's soon. Um, yeah. Have I missed anything? What's, um, what's, uh, the, what's the word on, um, first responders and origins? Mm -hmm. So first responders and the origin are both early next year. And, um, our, they're, they're manufactured in the United States or excuse me, in North America and Canada. Um, so they're not subject to freight issues overseas, but we are seeing some issues with getting paper uh, for our for our our, um, our printer. Um, so I won't I won't rule out any delays there, but but everything's on track. Nice. So yeah, we saw like I said, claim the sky. Like our we've been working with the same primary printer in Canada since the first Numenera core book in 2012, right? So we have a long long history with these guys. They printed. I don't know, 40, 50, 60 products for us. Uh, they're very, very reliable. When they tell us, oh, we can't be able to make the date that we promised, we know that, that, that they're not just screwing around. They're not, they're just, there's real problems. So, um, uh, uh, you know, claim this guy, like I said, less than one week of delays, we think. Um, but that's very unusual from them. Um, and, but then when they warn us that there could be paper issues or other things for the books that are going to press in like December, uh, you know, we just take it on board and, Hope that issues are resolved by the time we get to there. Gotcha. So, guys, anything else you want to say before I ask the first question from the chat? Um, also, um, Shauna was working on a, a, I know it wasn't directly produced by MCG, but the uh, uh, title, was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Title Blades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Title Blades. Uh, yeah. You know, any update on that? So Title Blades is wrapped from our end. I think, I don't think we've done the hyperlinking and bookmarking on the, PDF, um, but that is ultimately in Skybound's control. Um, so when they decide that they will move forward with that Kickstarter, which I think I think they had been planning for late uh, for late this year, um, but because of their own production cycle concerns and issues and whatnot, and of course they make big games, right? So for them, when a container goes from five thousand to twenty eight thousand, it's a really big deal for us. Like when we were moving the the, the tallest GM screen and the NPC deck. It's only a couple of pallets, right? It's it's like it's like a tenth of a container. So that huge spike in pricing, like certainly doesn't make us happy to pay the next, you know, a couple thousand extra bucks, but we can live with that. But you know, if you're a company that's shipping, you know, five, 10, 15 containers worth of products, you might be looking at a few hundred thousand dollars over your freight budget, right? So anyway, I, I digress there. The point is that they've got their own uh concerns and their own reasons for, for choosing their schedule. But my understanding is that there's that, um, that uh, we're not very far away from that, from, from their Kickstarter. And because the book's done, I think that they can go straight from the Kickstarter to release. But again, that's, that's up to them. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. Yeah, oh, quite and I will say, I will say this, I, as you guys know, I don't tend to say an awful lot about things that haven't been announced yet, but um, we will be making an announcement at the 
toward the end of this Kickstarter about what's next, about a new thing from us. And uh, it's also uh, uh, super exciting. I'm looking oh. forward to that. All right. Yeah, we did it. We did it. We, we got, got a little a, something. Got speculation <laughs> <begin>. <laughs> We got a Magic couple girls. of drops. No, okay. We got a couple of drops. <laughs> so, uh, screw tape from uh, you know from our uh, Cipher Unlimited channel and everything. And he's uh, in the chat. And he asked. He said, "Is the free preview the entire plane? Because it just feels like a first few pages of something longer." So um, I I don't know the answer to that exact question when he's talking about the Citadel of the Fate Eater that's in the preview. My, but what I can say is that some things will be treated with shorter entries and some things will be treated with longer, much more detailed entries. Um, so I don't know if Bruce has more content for the Citadel of the Fate Eater or whether that is one that is just that size. Um, uh, I, I don't know. So I, that'd be a question for Bruce when he comes on uh, sometime in the near future. Uh, Chris from Gonza Gaming asks, will um, Path of the uh, Plane Breaker be available in the Cypher Creator program? Uh, I don't know how to answer. I'm trying to think of like, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Maybe, uh, but, but again, like, I guess the real question there is, can you use that name when you create for it? Because of course you can create planes to visit and, and, you know, the items and creatures and things and so on within the existing system. Um, uh, so maybe. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, Al, you want to ask Samuel's question? Yeah. So we got one last question here. Um, mm -hmm. Just ask Charles. Do you mind telling us what the criteria are for making a licensed video game for Monty Cook Games? They're hoping to make a tallest game. Um, I'm assuming this is just a reference to like uh, Tides of the Luminara. Is that the name of the video mm -hmm. game? I'm, I'm blanking right. Format now. Tides but of the Luminara. Yeah. Yeah, but that I guess that's yeah that's the question. Yeah, so uh, there's actually a, a hidden question in that. So if if you're talking about licensing an MCG property, I'm the person you should want to talk to, and you can hit me up by email, charles at monicogames.com. Um, uh, however, I'm not the person to talk to you about Tallis, because in fact, Tallis belongs to Monty privately. Not It's not an MCG product. It is Monty's personally owned thing, and MCG has licensed it from Monty. Um, so... Uh, so MCG as the entity is not the controller of the tallest of the tallest brand. Um, so you'd have to reach out to Monty for that. You learn something Very new every day. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, true fact. Do we have any more questions in chat? Anybody that's uh, listening, do you have any questions? I'm in there. <laughs> Who knows when you'll see me again? Yeah. Well, Charles, you, you know, you're, you're challenging Sean. I think you and Sean are tied right now for most appearances on the show, and Sean takes that kind of personal. Well, <laughs> Sean is actually coming on next Wednesday. That's what so I'm saying, man. He's, he's going to take the lead again. Sean takes kind of personal, man, you know, because he's, he was our first person from MCG, and he's like, a, and he's holding the Rainer, hold, holding champion. <laughs> Reynolds, <laughs> I'll catch you! <laughs> so, oh, man, this has been great, guys. I Truly enjoy having you on, Charles. It's always insightful. We always learn something. Um, it's really great, you know, to to be a part of this community, be part of, uh, you know, bringing MCG to everybody out there in the world. We love being informative. We love our interviews. And, you know, we're getting ready to try to step up our game as well. But again, Charles, thank you so much. <laughs> Guys, you got anything you want to say to the people I mean, out there? I, I just want to talk directly about the Kickstarter and just MCG when it deals with Kickstarters. Um, if you watched any of our videos, we always break down the actual money value you get for, for MCG Kickstarters. And it's always at least three to one, four to one for your buck. So if you can, and I know in these troubling times, it's, it's hard to expect or to even ask someone to, you know, back beyond their means. And that's exactly not what I'm trying to, um, right. state but if if you do have the cash or the means to back at a higher level your money's worth is well worth it you know you you know you you're essentially paying quarter to the dollar on the products because what you get in return 
is, is you know two three hundred dollars beyond what you initially put in. Just and we don't, right, we don't we don't have to talk about the actual quality because the quality is always going to be there. If you're watching this show, then I'm I'm assuming you know the quality of MCG's books, you know. So I don't have to um, preach on you know on that mountaintop, but. If you can back at a higher level, you gonna you will not be disappointed because I, as someone who's backed every Kickstarter except for the original one, I have never, and I can honestly say this, I have never been disappointed with an MCG Kickstarter in terms of the value I get for what I put in. And I've backed everyone myself from Numenera all the way to now. And I'll probably always be trying to, I, I will make sure I'll go do an overtime day just to make sure I can pay for my, my Kickstarter. I'm being honest, it's the truth because I want my stuff, you know, Thanks. It, it is what it is. So, Al? I know, just thank you, uh, Charles, for coming on. Uh, thank everybody for stopping by. Uh, but I think Anthony has some parting words for us before we go. But yeah, thank yep. you all so much. If you like us and you like what we do, please follow us and um, subscribe here on Twitch or YouTube. You know, both both subscriptions and both follows do a ton of great for us. And, and you know, it brings our name out there in the, the um, web and let people know of all the great things we're doing. If you want to talk about all things Monty Cook Games, please join the Cypher Unlimited Discord. It's the largest fan-run Discord about all things MCG. We got close to 4,000 members. There are games being run every day, conversations about every MCG setting and game that you can always jump in. So please do that. If you don't, if Discord's not your thing, join our Facebook group. It's not as big as our Discord, but there's still conversations being had every day and mm -hmm. there's games to be. If you want to post a game, you can use either one of those social medias to get a game. We'll find you players. I promise you that, right? Or give us a little donation on Kofi. Our videos are always free, but it helps us out with little things like Zoom course. And if you want to rock this cool Cypher Unlimited gear, you know, <laughs> go to our um, online store and pick up some hats, mugs. We got capes coming out. We got all sorts of crazy things coming out. Just, uh, you know, purchase something there. And last but not least, we love you guys. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just to echo that, thank you guys so much. Um, thank you for stopping by. Thank you again, Charles, for all the information about Path of the Plane Breaker. Very exciting stuff. If you haven't backed it, be sure to, uh, because I'm sure there's some awesome stretch goals on the horizon for us. Not just what's been announced, but some secret goodies, I'm hoping. But either way, thank you all so much. And well, uh, One yeah. last thing. Oh. Sorry, before you give us our famous. Next week, we have Sean K. Reynolds coming on. To, to, we're going to touch on the design aspect of Path of the um, Play Breaker. He's going to pass Charles for most <laughs> appearances. And then following that, we have Bruce and hopefully Monty in back-to-back -back weeks. So if um, you're really into Path of Play Breaker, you want to actually learn about the actual design process and we could dig a little deeper and you know how, what kind of, what's going to be in these actual books, be sure to tune in the next three following Wednesdays. And um, we might have the supplies of an actual play of Path of the um, Plane Breaker as well with Run a special her. guest GM that should shock everyone. Okay. So, you know, stay tuned for that as well. Yeah, huh. yes. I yes. can't wait to find out about more about this. <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> Even Charles is enough. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it's quite exciting stuff. So, yeah, be sure to tune in next week and the following weeks to hear more about P the Path of the Plane Breaker. And stay tuned to hear more about this secret surprise potential actual play with the surprise GM. Wink. Yeah, Anyways, wink, wink. Uh, as usual, thank you guys so much. And from us at the CU, we will see you later.